Hello, I am back. This is Lori B. from Grungy Girl Journals. Um, I am back filming a little how-to on the ribbon, ribbon bow fringe that I used on my new journal called Fico Kit. Fico Kit, which is Flirty Girl. Don't you just love her? Um, so I had mentioned in the previous video that I would show you at the end of the flip through how I did this fringe and then I completely forgot and I'd already started, um, loading the video, the flip through video up to YouTube. So I wanted to make sure that I followed up with this short little, um, not really a tutorial, but just how I did it. So here's a book, and there is a full flip through. Um, my last video was a full flip through on this. And not only are there bows in the front, but there are bows inside the cover as well. And I will show you how I did that. So all of these, all this is seam binding, and I, I hand dyed it. And each bow was um, carefully glue tacked together so that you know if you if you pull on the ends, they aren't gonna you know it's not gonna readily come apart. Um, I wanted I, I tried to sew it I tried to tack sew and it was just too much too much too much. It was gonna be frustrating I could tell and there's like. I don't know, hundreds of bows on here, a few hundred, a couple hundred. So, um, I'm going to show you how to do that. This is how I store my seam binding, and I got this idea from Ulala La on YouTube. She did a video on how to store your ribbons and different, different ideas, and I got a whole box of like 150 rulers and I put all my laces this way and then I put them in a container and stand them up like this and so far it's worked out really well but I really like it for the seam binding because it keeps it flat and um, I don't even think I have ironed this yet but I'll probably iron it before I use it so these are all just the different seam bindings that I dyed. Well, actually I have this many more, but I still have to wrap on rulers. That's a whole nother story. And then this is just, I, I wanted to share, this is, I bought some fabric from this gentleman on eBay and he sent me this cute little pin cushion and it has a little pocket right here and it's got these really pretty little ribbon flowers but I thought that was really sweet of him that's just where I keep my pens this is the needle that I used and this is a doll doll needle and I believe it's five inches not too sharp, just sharp enough. Got a big eye on it, so it's very easy to to thread through the seam binding. And each of each piece of seam binding is around 12, 13 inches long. I just that gave me plenty of ribbon to work with, and you know to tie the bows and to kind of experiment with them. And uh, once I had the bow tied, I, I was able to cut off just a little bit of excess and I had very little excess. So about 12 inches is good. I've already pre-fringed pre some fabric. This is just fabric from my, from my stash. And I put in a book board because that's how I did um, the journal that I just made. I used, this is actually a old bingo card, 
and it's similar to to the book board I use. So what I what I would do is I would take the book board and then I wrapped it in um, what do you call that stuff? Um, batten. Is that what you call it? Bat. You know the stuff, the cushy stuff. Um, I just I would just wrap it around this and then I sandwiched it between a folded piece of come on now get in there folded piece of fabric where's my pen and I'm just kind of simulating how I did that other one So this would be uh, more cushier, and um, I would I sew would sew, and I actually hand sewed all the way around before I fringed, and that's kind of important because this is um, you're going to need something that is woven and that can readily you know accept this needle and the ribbon and uh, the French journal I did the fabric I used was pretty. Pretty, a pretty good open weave. I think this is a little more, a little less open, but it still worked really well. And all this is is just um, some upholstery, uh, Chanel upholstery fabric. So what I did was I took my needle and I take my two pieces of fabric, and I think I went like. Not even a half inch apart. That's really as far apart as you want your bows. Stick it in. Pull through. See, that was really easy. And then I'm going to pull it all the way through. And then take the needle out. So once I got all of my pieces of seam binding on, I just started experimenting with what I liked best because like I said in the flip through video, I used this image as a reference as to what I kind of wanted to, to um, copy on the, on the fringe and it was this lady's um, trim around her costume. They're probably flowers, but to me they looked like ribbon. And um, I wanted just something a little different than just regular fringe. So I started experimenting at this point. And if you if you tie it just like a bow, just like this, one one piece, and you tie it. And, you know, it takes a while. But you'll notice, if you do it that way, the bow is facing outward. And I really, that's really not the look I was going for. I wanted the bow to sit on top of the fabric. This, this would be the front of the journal. I wanted this to, the bow to sit on top of the fabric. So I undid it. and experimented a little more and what I ended up doing was taking two pieces so these are two separate 12 inch pieces side by side and get get them kind of even okay I got them kind of even and I did it this way so I took the two ends and I tied my bow to where it landed on top 
of the book. And then you just mess with it and, um, and get the bow nice and pretty. Get it the size you want. And if you'll notice, on mine, I kind of um, randomly put the, the color ribbon on. I used the off-white tea dyed, and I also used a lighter and a little bit of a darker French blue. And I just kind of, it wasn't really random. I think I did two, and then one off-white, two, and then one off-white. Um, but when you do that, you'll get a bow that is a mixture of the two different ribbon colors. In this ins instance, I only used one color seam binding, so all your bows are going to be the same color. But I thought that would be a nice, um, kind of like a variegated look for the ribbon and give it a lot more depth and, and texture. So that's why I did it that way. So the next one, I take two ends and tie them again. Two more. I'm just going to tie what I have here. And you notice I have one left over. And if that happens when, when you've put all your fringe up, you can just add another ribbon closer. You know, you can, you can stick another one in there. That would be no problem. So since I'm, I've got an odd amount on there, I'm going to go ahead and add another piece of seam binding. If I can get it thread, threaded. Now come on. And, and remember, this is the front cover. So this is the, the front cover, and then this is the inside of the front cover right here. And then I would do another one for the back cover. So go ahead and through, um, thread that through the both pieces. ends even. I'm just going to tie a bow. Okay. So I would keep doing that and you, you'll notice that these all kind of blend in together but if you use um, slightly different colors you get much more you can tell much more what's going on and once I get that side done I will flip it over and I would tie this side so not only do I get the bows in the front cover I get bows in the inside cover as well going to tie all these and you know there's there's a lot of adjusting and I even you know I ironed I ironed all of my 12 inch pieces of seam binding it was just easier they would have gotten really um, hard to work with if especially while I was experimenting you know untying and tying um, they would have gotten all matted like this 
and once that happens it's hard to get them fluffed back out again so I went ahead and ironed all my pieces and then did this Like I said, it's not easy doing this with nails, especially not being very used to having nails for a very, very long time, 40-something years. So I keep going. So once I've done that, once I've done that, I would uh, go back and make each bow the size that I want it, you know, retie it and get it nice and pretty. I would put a spot of glue. I used Fabri-Tac and I have those little, little tiny squeeze bottles with the, um, with the pen tip and um, I just put a spot of glue right there in the middle and tied it got it all pretty the way I wanted it and then I snipped off the ends you know to about here so that my friends is it you literally go around the whole and you can kind of see what a difference it makes when you um, iron these have not been ironed so they're just a lot more unruly when they're not ironed but that is the way you do it and of course it looks a little different because all these ends would be tied and it would go all the way around and then I would do the back cover do the exact same thing for the back cover and then once I got my two covers done let's say this is the back cover so here's the front here's the back I took another piece of fabric remnant sample and I laid it this way there's a spine there's a spine and I laid it this way this isn't big enough but I laid it this way across and then I stitched around and it's hand stitched around so that that this this is now part of the spine this piece of fabric is now part of the spine and I hope that made sense that is how I did the French ribbon bow French and it is time consuming I will admit that but um I, it did not bother me in the least bit. Um, I, it was actually kind of relaxing. The only part that I did not really like was the ironing because I got hot, kind of hot and sweaty. Um, that was really the only part I didn't like was ironing all those little bits. So remember, you can see this um, flip through on my previous video from today. And I hope this helps, and I hope maybe you experiment with your with your ribbons and your seam binding and um, make some frilly bows. Thanks a lot. I will see you next time. Bye.